it was one year ago that I posted this video sharing that I was leaving classroom teaching and taking on the world of online education full time. A year has passed and so much has happened. Hey everyone, and welcome back to my channel. First of all, I hope you all had a fantastic summer. I did not mean to take a random three month break from this platform, we'll get into that today, but I wanted to sit down and document the one year anniversary. One year ago, I sat in this office and told you guys that I was leaving my salaried classroom job behind to take on online education in a full-time environment. If I'm being really honest, it doesn't feel like a year, but looking back over the past 12 months, I can definitely say there were good times, bad times, lessons learned, and things I will definitely be doing differently going into year two. If you are new around here, welcome. My name is Kristen, and as previously stated in the intro of this video, I work in online education. We do videos here all about scheduling, different tips, and ways to get started in the virtual teaching space. Click that little red subscription button and the bell down below to be updated each and every time we make a new post on this channel. But without any further ado, let's get into everything I learned over the past 12 months. Now, just to keep things more organized, I do have notes right here and I've divided today's chat into sections, schedule, life transition, mental health, income, and going into year two. I will also have chapters linked along the timeline of this video. So if you want to skip ahead to a certain section, feel free, but let's go ahead and get started with schedule. Now over the past year, my schedule did change depending on the time of year, availability, and interest of learners on the OutSchool platform. But on average, I taught on a weekly basis 20 hours of actual teaching, one to two hours of lesson planning, making sure everything I needed was pulled up, prepared, and ready to go, four to five hours of online content that can be social media. I did build a website, kristensclassroom.com, as well as started to make products on places like Teachers Pay Teachers. I also worked with clients, other people that wanted to get into the online space, and I gave between four to five hours a week with them, and then one to two hours a week to administrative work, emails. Now at this point in time, I do not have a virtual assistant. I do not work for an organization. So all of the numbers you are hearing from me today are just me. I don't have a team. I don't have people that work under me on the OutSchool platform. If you don't know what I'm talking about, that's completely okay. Just know that every number and schedule I give here is just a reflection of myself in the online teaching space. Now I did note in the spring of this year, I lowered my teaching to 16 hours because I had other projects I needed to work on that needed my attention during the nine to five work day. But typically speaking, over the last 12 months, I worked between 28 and 35 hours per week. Now for anybody here who's interested in online teaching and they think, wait a minute, I thought you worked less hours and made more. Well, that might be true, especially if you have a full-time salary job that can pay all your bills. But when full-time teaching is what's putting food on your table, paying your mortgage, and taking care of every necessity from a financial standpoint, these were the hours I had to put in. Could I have put in more? Absolutely. Could I have put in less? Of course, this is just year one, and I'm sure later on down the line, if I do a year two or a year three reflective video, I can look back at this and see what lessons I've learned, and hopefully, hopefully, Kristen, we will have come further than this. And final side note under schedule, you will see a future video where I will be doing an income report for the summer of 2022, just to show you guys that schedule, simply because I did try to do a 40 hour work week. A different video for a different day, just wanted to give you guys a heads up, but once again, 28 to 35 hours per week was the schedule. Not gonna lie, I did not see this one coming until I was helping friends set up their classrooms as they were preparing to get into the school year. I was also on teacher text threads, so I was still hearing how professional development was going, different meetings were going, different events going on outside the classroom. I was able to visit some former students during certain times of the year where they were having like visitation days and former teachers and alumni and students can all come together. That was really nice, but it did take a while for me to realize and understand just how much of your identity goes into your job when you're a teacher. And I'm sure it is like that with other professions. Uh, for example, I used to sing on board cruise ships. And when I chose to come back on land and try to build a life 
not on ships. I realized how much of my identity was there and the same holds true for teaching. It felt kind of like I was an outsider looking in, reading these text chains, still getting coffee with teaching friends and realizing, wait a minute, we don't have the same things to talk about anymore because we aren't teaching in the same space anymore. And I did have several friends who left the district I was in and went to other districts. So that was fun to like, see how your first year was and my first year was. Several schools in my area actually now have an online teaching option. So if a learner wants to do like a hybrid now in a full-time learning setting, they can do like Monday through Thursday in the classroom and Fridays virtually, which is amazing. I might look into that in the future, no guarantees, but something worth noting. Also, I did take this year to try to branch out and meet other teachers who were working in the online space. This past summer, I did get to travel to New York City and see Katie, a fellow OutSchool teacher and organization owner on the platform. We got to have coffee, hang out in Bryant Park. And honestly, it was the closest thing to having like a teacher's lounge in an online setting. I'm not saying you have to travel to another country to have something like that, but it was really cool to finally branch out and meet teachers who know what it's like to do the kind of job that I do. <sighs> Working and living in your house is a lot. When it comes to mental health, I had a really hard time drawing the line between work hours and off work hours, like clocking in, clocking out. I did not have the boundaries. I would work a full day, cook dinner, and then be on my computer cleaning out emails, setting things up for the next day, not taking that time off to relax, recharge, spend time with Christopher. But at that time, I didn't have those boundaries set, so I would get burnt out really quickly. There was no downtime. I literally would have notebooks with list upon list upon list. We can do a separate video about keeping productive when you work from home, but when it comes to mental health, if you live and work in the same space, you need to have boundaries. And I made a list here just so I would keep myself on task. All right, things that helped me set these boundaries was having a solid lunch break that could not be changed. From noon to 1 p.m. was my time. The computer, the laptop, the notes, everything stayed upstairs. I would go downstairs, drink a glass of water, and sometimes I had them prepped and ready to go like overnight oats. Other times I wanted to make, you know, fresh eggs and avocado and fruit or something. It just depended on the week and what I was feeling, but that was an hour for me to go downstairs, take a breath, watch maybe a YouTube video or a Netflix show. A lot of times I would eat outside on my patio just to get some fresh air and a change of scenery. But that lunch hour did not change. I would not put a class, I would not put a meeting, I would not put admin work in that time. The second thing I noted was getting into a gym routine outside of my house. On March 15th of this year, I joined Orange Theory Fitness and I have to say it was the hardest thing I'd ever started. I am just now six months into it. It is the greatest thing I have ever done simply because I am not athletic. I am the girl that was picked last in sports. I did choir and musicals. We're all very shocked by this information, but now I can run multiple miles. I know the proper way to lift weights. Do I want to lift heavy? That is in no way, shape or form what I am going for. I just now know how to do that. And getting into that routine that gets me out of the house is wonderful. If you want more information about that, I can share it on my Instagram. I know that this YouTube channel is not about working out, but that is such an important part of teaching. Whether you are in the classroom or you are online, having time that is dedicated just to you is so important. Even if it is just going for a walk, getting away from your lesson planner, however you are planning lessons, it is amazing and I highly, highly recommend it. Ironically, that was my next point. Walks and podcasts have been great. I cannot always go to Orange Theory. I do have an unlimited membership, but those workouts are really hard on your body. So on the days that I don't go to Orange Theory, I will stretch, drink my water, and I will pick a podcast. If I'm being completely honest, I've been doing a lot of podcasts based around Teachers Pay Teachers. I have future content coming around. I got into that game very recently, like the last teacher on the earth to get into it, but I've been listening to a lot of podcasts about it, learning from other people. I kind of treat walking in podcast almost like professional development, but no notes are needed and it's just to get in my steps. And lastly, I wrote gardening and journaling. Those have been so nice. You guys, 
I'm gonna make sure I put a picture of this in the video, but I have peppers for the very first time in my garden. I love this. And then I've also been journaling and keeping a task list. A task list has been great because it lets me turn my brain off of work mode, just knowing, hey, everything is written out. The work will be there tomorrow. You're good to go. Go relax. You need that time. Now, before we talk numbers, I do want to take a moment and thank the sponsor of today's video, which is my free teacher money mindset and savings tracker. Now, the biggest mistake I made in online teaching was believing that if business was good, it was only going to get better. When business was really good a year ago, I thought to myself, what better time to start aggressively paying off debt? I paid off my car in its entirety and about 90% of our mortgage loan. And then guess what happened? Business was not so great and I didn't have as much savings to rely on. And I'm not sitting here saying paying off debt is bad. I'm just sitting here saying, do not make my mistake portion out what bits of money will go to different things that you need, whether it be bills, savings, or paying off debt. That is where this guide came in handy. It is completely free. It is what I use to not only budget our income each and every month, but have a savings tracker. And I love it because it has little apples on it. I think those details are so cute. Once again, the budget template and the savings tracker are completely free. I have a link down below in the description box. Honestly, these tools helped me so much after the last 12 months. And if it's something that can help you out, grab your free copy down below in the link to my TPT shop and let's talk numbers. Like I mentioned before, there were times over the past year where income ebbed and flowed. If you do want to know some numbers and averages, keep watching. If that's not what you want, skip ahead about 20, 25 seconds. But if we're going to put real numbers into this, my highest month since quitting earned me just over $8,000 and my lowest just under $2,500. So as you can clearly see from these numbers, there were some big ebb and flows throughout the year, which makes sense. Nothing really surprising here. I can also say on average, I earned 90 to $95 per hour, and I do have a summer income report coming out, like I mentioned earlier, that way you guys can see month per month the hours I put in and the income that reflected it. Oh, and lastly, let's talk about going into year two. This is definitely a work smarter, not harder year. I now have my first year under my belt. I know the mistakes I've made. I know the things that I want to change. I did write in my top three things I am taking into year two. Number one, keeping a solid work schedule. That way I know every single week, here are the hours I give to classes. Here are the hours I give to content creation and clients and admin work. I'm still working on those boundaries we talked about when we were speaking about mental health. Number two, continue professional development slash learning in the business. That is something I'm sure any business owner will tell you is you are always learning. If I were to keep all of the classes I was teaching on OutSchool two years ago, I don't think I could do this in a full-time capacity because trends come and go, students come and go. The classes that were popular years ago are not getting the same enrollment. So I did have to continue learning, growing, looking at the business model and just continue working, especially in professional development. I've also been taking a lot of classes pertaining to video creation. I know I mentioned previously in my spring vlogs that I was doing videos, not just for me, but for clients. So the more skills I could have, the better. And lastly, prioritizing hobbies outside of work. This is something I would give myself the lowest grade in because I was so focused on making the numbers. If that means staying up late, missing something with family and friends, I would do it. Now going into year two, I'm going to have that firm stance, a hard stop. I'm going to try to have at least one social event on the calendar a week so I can continue working towards a work-life balance. Do I think there's ever a perfect balance? Absolutely not because no weeks are the same, but getting into things like working out outside your house, having hobbies, growing a garden, seeing your family and friends, that's what this is all about. Will it ever be perfect? Absolutely not. But I do think it is something you can continue learning from and improving for the future. But you guys, that is it for today's video. It was so great to be back with you guys on this channel. Once again, let me know how your summers were down below in the comment section. We are going to try to post videos on this page each and every Monday. So make sure you do have that bell rung. Let me know if you have any video suggestions down below. Give this one a huge thumbs up and we'll see you next Monday. Bye.